um, and how many future doctors. Okay, so my name is Yasmin Gazi, and I'm a junior here at Maine State University studying electrical engineering with a concentration in biomedical electronics. I am the president of Society of Women Engineers and also the president of Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. I'm also an uh, intern at DTE Energy, and I couldn't love it more. Do you all remember that transition from middle school to high school? I certainly do, but for a different reason than you all might. When I was 15, I used to complain about dress pains. And my mom always reassured me, yes, me, you're fine. Maybe you're just exaggerating. Everything's OK. She noticed I started complaining more frequently about it, and she decided to take me to an adult cardiologist. So on our way to the cardiologist, she reassured me, you're going to be fine. This is a normal checkup, not to worry. So I was, as I was laying there getting checked up, I noticed the technicians and the doctors were looking at the screen and pointing with hushed voices. And it was really dramatic. And I'm like, oh my god, something might be wrong. So you know, I, I disregarded that. And then the doctor called my mom out of the room. And then it hit me. You know, something's up. On the drive back home, it was pretty normal. My mom then went to the room my dad was in and closed the door, and she was talking to him. And I decided, you know, just to let it play out. You know, I, I won't make a big deal out of it. Then she told me uh, she scheduled an appointment at Children's Hospital to, just to take, you know, another uh, opinion since the doctor I went to was an adult cardiologist, and I was only 15. So, you know, maybe the other doctor would know a little bit better. So, <clears throat> again, I'm laying there being examined, and again, the hushed voices, they're pointing to the screen, they're looking and making like faces that, you know, were kind of weird to me. I was only 15 years old. So we're waiting in the room, and then I hear a knock on the door. It was the doctor. He entered the room, he introduced himself, and then he said, It's me, you have ASD. So, what is ASD? ASD is atrial septal defect. It's when you have a hole between the left and right chambers of your heart. Imagine being 15 years old and hearing you have a hole in your heart. It was really scary for me. I felt like my world was crashing down. It was a really intense moment. And I started drilling the doctor with questions. How did you not know I had a hole in my heart? You know, oh my god, this is crazy. Obviously, he didn't know, but it was, you know, you're born with this? So it kind of hit me like, why didn't he know this when I was born? Or he didn't test it then. So if you guys all can make a fist, so your heart is the size of your fist. And imagine just opening up, opening it up a little, my hole is 25 millimeters. So imagine that size hole in your heart. Again, it's really scary. And for a 15-year-old, I didn't know what to think. I asked the doctor if the chest pains I was having were related to that. And he said, no, you know, those are growth pains like your mom said. And that symptoms for ASD are unnoticeable. For example, it's a heart murmur or a skipped heartbeat. And those are things you don't find out about unless you go and get checked out because they're hard for us to just we feel, we feel our heart. We won't know we have that. So I was a little bit you know, relieved that I found out about something and it didn't really have symptoms that were that known. And he was really surprised I found out about it this early because since it doesn't have symptoms, people find out about it too late. So when you're 21 or 22 and you find out about it, your heart gets enlarged and it can be fatal. So that was the one good thing. You know, it wasn't too bad at that time. So I started asking him about treatments. And he then said, there's two treatments. Open heart surgery, again, 15 years old. Oh my god, am I going to have open heart surgery? This is so scary. And then he said, a catheter procedure. So a catheter is a, um, a thin, flexible tube. And it's injected in your groin, which is your upper thigh. And it's guided to the heart. And it has a device on the back of it it's kind of uh, like an umbrella shape that's in a plaster, and it's guided to the septum, and it sits in the, in the hole. And then if you have enough tissue, you're eligible for this because then the tissue covers the hole in the device, and it's sealed. So he explained to me what open heart surgery is. Everyone knows what it is. It's an incision. He covers the defective area. He sews you back up. Then you're put on a heart lung bypass machine, and it takes a while to recover. So I'm just sitting there, crossing my fingers, like praying to God, please let me be eligible, you know, for the catheter procedure. He explained he'd have to do another test to see if I had enough tissue. So we scheduled an appointment again to go to the hospital on August 25, 2008. And there was about a month in between that time. And I was reevaluating my life. It really, it was really hard for me at 15 being 
such a young age. I felt like I matured quickly, quicker than I was supposed to. I had a lot of time to think about myself, you know, what was going on. <clears throat> so we're driving up to the hospital on August 25, and I had that exam. And he said if I was eligible for the catheter procedure, they would do, it's kind of like a surgery, they do that right away. <coughs> and I woke up, and he said, it's me, you know, you have the device, you were eligible for that, you have like an implaster device in your hole, but we're going to come check you up in six months to make sure the tissue covers and grew over the, the device and your heart's in good, in good condition. Again, after six months, I went to the hospital, he said everything was looking good, and it was a really big moment for me. I felt so relieved, I felt, you know, this was my own kind of miracle. And that's why it inspired me to go into engineering. So a lot of people don't understand how related engineering and medicine are. So for example, that echocardiograph, which was what they used to check on my heart, that's something an engineer built. And that device that they injected me in, that little uh, umbrella-shaped device, was built by an engineer. So engineers have a really, really big role in uh, modern medicine. And I just wanted to shed light on that and to just bring, to bring awareness about ASD and how important it is to get checked up because it doesn't have any symptoms. Thank you.